as long as it comes place of dwelling. Based on this premise, we can relate to the place of dwelling from different perspectives. The dwelling space is primarily a holder to one relations and actions, which goes beyond relationship, but stands as a primary relation of the self and all the possibilities that are at reach on the physical and the virtual reality. This place of dwelling could be a physical space as well as a virtual one. But in order to be a real place of dwelling, it has to be a place where the self relates to others, things or beings. Heidegger defends the idea of a space of dwelling as a place where men build. But he also claims that not every building is a place of dwelling. Therefore, this build does not necessarily mean the build of a building, but it can mean the build of another kind, a build of a relation, a relation that occurs on a much more emotional or a symbolic level. On the physical space of the self interaction with its surroundings, a way of connecting itself with it. As Heidegger said, within itself is always a stain with things, which means that when the self interacts with its surroundings on a physical level, interacting with things, we actually do the physical space itself. Yes, in this case, the physical aspect of the, sp of the space are essential to a dual dwelling, a full dwelling, sorry, as well as the time where this connect occurs. Why is that? Well, any connection is now alive, as simple as it can be, always of course on a space and time level, because anything that happens to us in this world as we know it, has a place and time defined to it. Dwelling as we understand it is primarily building, but not building in a physical way, but building relations, which can be with others, things or beings, or even with space itself, that could be physical or virtual. On the virtual space, this connection may be different, but it does not mean that the space and time are not important. They just have another way of behaving. On a virtual level, the limits are different, because in the digital space, you are related with different paradigm of space-time than on a physical level. On this, new, on this new paradigm, we can say that the physical limits of the space are non-existent, or at least non-existent on a measurable way. The virtual space is not palpable, so we can actually measure its size or its limits, and that gives us the impression of infinity. But in reality, the boundaries in the virtual space are, far, are formed from the relationship dynamic that comes through the communications net that occurs on the virtual space. Once again, we face the dwelling of space through relations that apparently has no boundaries. But even on this fluid environment, we still have the presence of space and time. Even if it's not a palpable space, but a virtual one, even then, our interactions occur on a defined space and time. On that stand, we can assume that in order to fully relate the self to the place of dwelling, we have to comprehend this place on a space and time level. In fact, the time, in social terms, will represent the changes, or consequences of changes that occur in the heart of one society, over time. But the symbolic determination of these changes are linked uh, to the configuration of space and time, and not of the time itself. That occurs because everything that happens is an experience self for and on the self, and any experience that we have occurs on a space and time well marked. That means that by analyzing the time where a relation is taking place, we must, have, we must hands for determining the space where that time occurs. While the space is crucial to the existence and seizure of an edge object and or experience, the time can represent things that happen at the same time while simultaneously or at a different time in section. But no matter what experience is in time, it needs a space to actually exist. That is, the space and time are determinants of all experience. A space and time are those concepts, much more than objects. The space is a needed representation at its simplest is there, not needing to have within an object that characterizes space without even its exist. And even if no object and yet just emptiness we still have space. The dimension of space and time permits the social experience of space-time, where demonstrations occurred in space-time has a symbolic meaning depending on the place and the moment. In order to fully understand the space of dwelling on a physical level, we must understand the physical space itself and comprehend how does that dwelling on that type of space occurs. Of course, man interacts with the physical space on a physical level, which means we actually leave the space that, we are, that are surrounding us. But that, it's just not it. It has more than it. Uh, because at the same time that we in or it can be the building of space on a physical or even a symbolic level, it also can be another type of experience. How is that? In the words of Heidegger, when we call Holderling, poetically man dwells. If man dwells on a poetic way, we should also understand the space 
over a poetic view. And for that, you can resort to Bachelard, who wrote about space, or better yet, the poetic of space. The way, the way Bachelard describes space, and also the way he sp sees the space, is timeless. But anyhow, it's preferable if we have in mind the space-time when where this was wrote, so we can better relate to his saying, and also to understand that when he talks about space, this is the space that was known at his time. On his studies of space, or better yet, the poetics of space, Bachelard defines the space of tweeting as a space that should be a space of reflection, the moment of pause, the space time where one can truly relate, but it's possible to make real connections. Based on, what, on that, we can assume that the space of tweeting it is therefore the space time to establish relations, to make real connections. It is the place where one can take possession of something, where the development of new meanings are liable. The space, this physical space that we can relate to through Bachelor is the space that surrounds us. It is made by the physical limits that we define or the ones that are defined by, for us by others. When Bachelor wrote about space, he started with the space of home, the sense of shelter. This means there's a space of protection, protection of intimacy. In this secluded and secure space, Bachelor defines the space where men can just be, the place where the self can relate the space uh, sorry, the self can relate the space of our memories, and with that, the space time in which the self dwells. Why time? Because in order to relate to memories, we have to relate to the, self, to the time itself. The memory goes around space through time, and when the self relates to them, it can actually be. That means that the self only truly dwells when it relates to something or someone. However, the place of dwelling in the contemporary has yet another possibility, the virtual space. When we say virtual space, in this case, we are not talking about an inner space or a state of mind, but a digital space. In this new reality, the place of twin has its own shape. This space has its own way of relating to other things or beings. In this space, without physical borders, the self can define a new reality. This new reality is setting on an abstract space, where the self can build its own surroundings. This happens because the self that wields the virtual space is from a different type of being. We are not a hero. We are not talking here of a physical being. Of course, that in order of, uh, of the self-act to be in a virtual space, until now at least, the physical being needs to exist. But the self that actually dwells on the virtual digital space is also a virtual self. The virtual self is the one that dwells on the digital space, is it? Well, in a way it is, but the virtual self has its negative on the physical space, so the self also exists in the physical form. When the self assess the virtual space as dreamlike, meditative, contemplative, or digital space, the self is away from the physical tangible. Then the self wields the space virtually. In this new form um, of, space, of space, the presence of the self it is what actually matters. The self not being a physical one has other implications, but what truly matters is the presence of the self on the virtual space and how the self relates to others in it. The virtual digital space changes the self behavior that determines more time for a social life and digital entertainment. It is the emergence of a group of people who establish a new relationship between space and time, altering the relationships with the physical world and with other human beings in a simultaneous environment digitally. Simulate environment is to define their existence by some element as virtual reality that simulates the physical space with walls, floors, and ceiling. This is the three-dimensional geometric simulation it can have other electromechanical devices to extend this representation as statical sensors and sound. On the other hand, another scenario is possible. The events that occur in physical space, like meeting people, watching images in galleries, sending documents, or establishing communications, is both cases occur in digital representations. As was said before, Heidegger defends the idea of a space of tweeting as a place where men build. While it is possible that the idea of building is dwelling also in the virtual digital space. When the self views the virtual digital space through surfing the web and sees traveling through sites on the web that are defined by the self and possibly different for every person since they are elected in accordance with the wishes and desires as a private organization of the physical space. Then there is an organization of the digital virtual space but differently. While the organization provides physical position for objects and defines taking into account current quantitative and qualitative aspects, they are in order with physical aspects of the space. The aspects in digital operate by other factors, such as seduction, seduction, 
innovation, speed contact, innocence experience, anonymity, and achievement. Both spaces, the physical as well the virtual digital one, organize spaces of relationship, one with objects, one with poor relationship, relations information. These relations information could be text, digital newspaper, simultaneous conversation, videos released that is organized under a particular interest, work priorities, schedules of activities, shopping lists, and the list can go on and on. What is intriguing in this even is that even the digital space being so virtual and dynamic, it is still the same place that the self wheels on a physical, in a physical space or in a physical level. How is that? Well, in both cases, there are the clear difference between categories of spaces. In both types of spaces, we have the public space, the space that anyone has access. In the physical space, this is the front yard of a house, the lobby of a hotel, or even a more public space like a park. In the virtual digital space that happens on the first page of any site, all of the websites have the least, at least one of first page that is public, totally public. Uh, and then there are the semi-public spaces, the physical world that will be the living room of a house, the classroom of a school, or even the meeting room of a company. And at last, we have the private spaces, those uh, uh, that just a few of us are invited to go. Those places are in physical spaces, the bedroom of a house, the private office in a company. And on the virtual digital space, the private places are the spaces where the only access is through a login or an invitation, in the case of some social networks. The most intriguing difference, on the other hand, between the physical and the virtual digital spaces lies on the space-time dynamic. While the space-time is clearly a factor that sets every experience that occurs in the physical environment, because every experience occurs necessarily on a certain space and certain time, the same cannot be said about the space-time factor on the virtual digital space. The virtual digital space relates to the space-time in its own way. Why? Because of the virtual digital space, it is possible to interact with more than one space at the same time. If we take the street way to analyze how space-time relates, we see that it cannot actually relate to, uh, relate to uh, two things at the same time. But, no being as streets, we can assume that it's possible on the web relate to more than one thing or being simultaneously. At the same time that we can relate to the physical place as a place of dwelling, we can also relate as a, a space of dwelling as much dynamic and flowing space, flowing place such as the virtual, virtual space. It is possible for us to inhabit simultaneously both spaces, the physical and the virtual one. The way of dwelling both spaces are different from one another, but on the same level they relate to each other. The relations are transferred from one space to another sometimes on a smooth way and other on much conflicted form. The conflicts can be generated by the trans transfer of relations between the physical and the virtual space. These relations that are fundamental pieces in order to oneself to dwell the space-time have different characteristics on the physical and the virtual space. They occur both simultaneously and differently. What happens on one space can be reclassified on the other. A part of the conflicts that could occur on this re requalification from one space to the other, the self wills. The place of dwelling is on a principle, the place of intimacy, the place of protection. In other words, it is a place where it feels like home. This place can be at the same time a physical and a virtual place. The place we truly dwell is the space time when we make a connection, when we truly relate with each other, is when, when we are whole. So this research is, uh, is in the beginning. It's ongoing and its, uh, it's primary uh, importance is about how to relate to space and how to relate to space through time and the perception of space on a physical and a virtual level. So this is so far what I have. Thank you. Architecture. I'm a student. Can you hear me now? Okay. Um, 
it's great. So, um, I'm Alina Bostu. As I said, I'm not a student of architecture, I'm a student of anthropology. I've just finished my master's program. And uh, the presentation that I'm going to give today is based on research that I did for my dissertation. It focuses on one of my informants, a, a lovely 87-year-old gentleman, who's a former professor of microbiology and who's been living on, in the same house for the past 30 years, which is not impressive in itself, but I'm going to describe his relation to his um, wife, his house, his memory and temporality, and then you'll see um, how it relates to house and home in the whole context of the conference. Um, so I'm going to start with a distinction between house, uh, the two concepts of house and home. Um, house being reflecting a more detached view of the structure or the building that offers um, shelter to, to an individual or to more. Uh, while home can go as far as uh, talking about a country, a city, a favorite pub if you want, a nice park around the corner, or things like this. Um, in the words of Mary Douglas, home is located in space, but it's not necessarily a fixed space. It does not need uh, bricks and mortar. It can be a wagon, a caravan, a boat, or a tent. It need not be a large space, but space there must be, for home starts by bringing space under control. Uh, this idea of bringing space under control um, is what I'm going to try to investigate, to uh, look into by um, trying to see, trying to discover uh, my informant's relations to, to his house, as I said, his wife, his memories and uh, time and temporality. Uh, I'm going to refer to him as Mr. H from now on, just to stop calling him the informant. Um, the making of a house and the making of a uh, making of home can be two very different processes. If the first one is the creation of an object, it's a mental ex exercise of the architect. The second one, the making of home, it's a long, um, long process of transformation and um, addition of layers. These layers can either be uh, physical objects in terms of furniture. Um, renovation, conservation, and so on, or they can actually be, or they can be immaterial things like ideas, memories, thoughts, events, ex ex the experiences of the people inhabiting the of the dwellers, people inhabiting inhabiting the house. And the ethnographic example that I'm providing here, the house that we're talking about, it's a beautiful Georgian uh, style house uh, from the 18th century, with an impressive, a remarkable history. Um, very important figures of the 18th and 19th century um, in, in uh, Britain um, have, have lived there, they're related to, this, uh, to the house, either attending social affairs or, as I said, actually living there. Um, it's situated in North London in an area that abounds in similar houses and you have lots of uh, buildings listed by the English Heritage, there are lots of, um, you know, planning applications sorry, planning applications, um, conservation act activities, and so on. Um, and so the history of the house creates a real biography for, for, for the house. Um, there is, a, in the, the history, you have qualities of uh, respect, dignity, uh, pride that come embedded in the building itself. And these are qualities that make the house almost a person, and I dare say that because in my first meeting with uh, my informant, with Mr. H, um, I was given, from almost from the very first moment, I was given a biography of the house. I was almost introduced to the house itself. Um, these qualities that I've mentioned were actually um, taken, inherited by the, the Mr. H and his wife, and they were um, increasingly and continuously uh, taking into consideration in the act of dwelling which was mentioned by um, in the, the first presentation and I'm going to talk about this act of dwelling uh, in uh, later later on um, so in in relating to to the house and in trying to preserve the its quality its essence 
the my uh, inform my informant and uh, his uh, his wife what they actually try to do is they uh, attempt to step into the durable time dimension of the building and borrow a hint of its perceived indestructibility in the sense that they uh, spend an enormous uh, effort and, and a huge amounts of money trying to uh, preserve the quality of the house and of the uh, neighborhood. They try to always synchronize their own lives and the, uh, the act of dwelling to the history, to the biography of the, of the uh, house, in a sense trying to embed themselves in the history of the house. Um, this transition from house to home is um, was primarily uh, achieved through uh, populating the house with uh, appropriate objects. Objects that are appropriate for the house, they share the value, the qualities, the intrinsic um, values, as I said, but they also uh, reflect the preferences and the values, the ideas and the thoughts of the inhabitants. Um, if uh, dwelling is akin to thinking, as Heidegger, as Heidegger uh, argues, then, and dw then dwelling is um, achieved through a pro uh, projection of one's being and thought into objects and activities that make the home. Um, uh, this history, um, so the, the history comes embedded in the house and once living within the walls of the house, one needs to adapt. This process of adaptation uh, signifies the transition from house to home. And at the same time, if we look from a per, uh, phenomenological perspective, we could see the transition from a space, um, limitless, decentered, homogeneous, uh, homogeneous um, space, to a more centered, subjective uh, place. The, the distinction being that one is um, um, is um, you, you could just see it in uh, the difference in between uh, objective and subjective. Um, so the um, the importance of the objects and the importance of dwelling of the process of dwelling uh, can be seen in the new circumstances of the house, uh, which are given imposed actually by uh, the. The increasing, um, sorry, the, the increasing difficulties in coping with every uh, with daily activities. Um, these new circumstances are the fact that uh, Mr. H's wife has um, a late stage of Alzheimer's, which means that she can no longer communicate with him. Um, his um, his uh, advanced age and his impaired uh, his impaired vision, and so confronting daily occurrences which impose multiple changes in order to accommodate uh, their increasing uh, uh, needs is something that uh, changes the way Mr. H interacts and experiences his, um, his house. Uh, these new, these new uh, circumstances um, required him to actually clear out some of the rooms of the, of the house in order to bring medical equipment from, for his wife. Um, this actually disrupted, disrupted his uh, normal uh, and daily rhythms of, uh, of his daily activities. He had uh, an entire room uh, left to, to only to left to bare only to wall, ceiling, and floor. This and the sudden fall into an original indistinguishable carcass created a confusing and disturbing state far more over the expected discomfort, discomfort of having to clear a room in one's house. The urgency of the matter only added to the agitation, since it was not only the place that was being tampered with, but intrinsically bound with it, the temporality and memory of the place ex as experienced by Mr. H. Uh, this continuous uh, intrusion of new objects into the private, the intimate uh, space of the home created a disjuncture between Mr. H and the house, which became at times unrecognizable. So you have all this medical equipment in the very core of their, of their home, which actually which interfered with uh, the coping mechanism and the um, way of uh, using memory and, uh, and intimacy in one's, uh, in one's home. 
Uh, one example of trying to cling on, to hang on, onto a previous, uh, previous intimate and familiar uh, place is that 